Am I the idiot for telling my wife she's f***ing wrong and that my mom is right? I, 35M, have been married to my wife, 32F, for five years, and we've been struggling financially for the past few months. I lost my job about three months ago, and while I've found part-time work, it doesn't pay nearly as much as before. We've had to cut back on a lot of things, but it feels like no matter what we do, we're still living paycheck to paycheck, and even pulling from savings. Recently, my mom, 65F, came over to visit, and she noticed how stressed I was about the money situation. She offered some advice on how we could save money. Things like cutting down on takeout, meal prepping to avoid buying groceries multiple times a week, and switching to cheaper brands. My mom has always been frugal, especially when she was raising me and my siblings on a tight budget. I thought it made sense, especially since we're really trying to save wherever we can. I asked if she was willing to go through our spending and show where we could cut down. My wife agreed with this. She made a whole spreadsheet about our spending, and we are spending way too much on fun stuff. We don't need Starbucks every day and so on. It also became apparent that most of the fun spending was my wife's. TBH. My wife didn't take the breakdown well and started arguing with my mom that her spreadsheet was wrong. She said that my mom's way of doing things is outdated and doesn't work for us. She doesn't want to give up buying organic produce, and she likes having variety in what we eat each week. I tried to explain that we need to make some sacrifices if we want to get out of this financial hole. But she kept insisting that things weren't as bad as I was making them out to be, and that we just needed to ride it out. My mom left at this point and we were still arguing, and she told me she can't give up her takeout. She also went on about my mom being wrong. That's when I lost my patience and said, you're fushing wrong. My mom is right. She managed to raise three kids on one income, and we can't even cut back on groceries for a few months. My wife got really upset, saying I am being a huge jerk for whining with my mom and that my mom is outdated. She's barely spoken to me since, and now I'm wondering if I went too far. But the way I see it, we need to be realistic about our situation, and my mom's advice could actually help us get back on track. Am I the idiot for refusing to take my sister's kids to school after they've been bullying my son? A bit of background. My sister, Sarah, and her two kids, Jake 14M and Mia 12F, recently moved in with us after Sarah went through a rough divorce. She's been staying with us for about six months now, and we've tried to be as accommodating as possible. My wife, Laura, and I have one son, Ethan, 13M. At first, everything was fine and the kids got along okay. Over the last few months, however, Jake and Mia have been making Ethan's life miserable. They've been teasing him constantly, calling him names, and even going through his things when we're not around. It's been especially bad for Ethan because he's more introverted and quiet. He's come to us multiple times, upset about things they've said or done, and I've tried addressing it with Sarah. Her response has been pretty dismissive, saying, it's just normal sibling stuff, they'll grow out of it. The tipping point came last week when Ethan told me that Jake had taken his school project, something he'd spent days working on, and ruined it by drawing all over it. Ethan was in tears. When I confronted Jake, he laughed it off like it was a joke. Sarah didn't seem to think it was a big deal and said Ethan was being too sensitive. Laura was furious but tried to stay calm. I finally had enough and told Sarah that if she couldn't keep her kids in check, I wasn't going to keep doing favors like driving them to school every day. I've been taking all the kids to school since Sarah moved in because her car broke down and she hasn't been able to get it fixed. It's about a 20-minute detour for me, and I was happy to do it at first. But after all this, I told her it was too much and she needed to figure it out on her own. Now Sarah is upset, saying I'm punishing her and her kids over something small, and it's not fair for me to leave her stranded. She even went as far as to say I was being petty and holding a grudge against the kids. She thinks I'm overreacting and should just let it go for the sake of family harmony. My wife is 100% on my side and thinks Sarah's kids have been out of line for months. But now Sarah's giving me the cold shoulder and telling other family members that I'm being unreasonable. So, am I the idiot for refusing to drive them to school anymore? Am I the idiot for telling my mom and sister the best help they can give is to shut the fuck up? My wife gave birth to our son six weeks ago. He's healthy and doing great. My wife is doing okay. Physically, she's pretty much fine, but emotionally, she is fragile right now. She's dealing with some anxiety post-baby, some other mental health problems she had from before pregnancy. She has worked on them in therapy, but the pregnancy and PP hormones have flared up some stuff on her. She's also disappointed she couldn't breastfeed. She didn't try to, but that was in her best interest not to. And her reasons are not something she shares openly, but I'm aware, and so are her family who know her history. But she grew up in a home where the women breastfed. And while they understand, my mom and sister are also very pro-breastfeeding, like militant about it. I warned them before my wife gave birth that they were not to try and pressure her or give her helpful tips about it when it was not happening. They didn't listen to me and brought her some info from a breastfeeding group they're both members of and told her there was zero reason for her not try try. This resulted in me telling them to leave. I let the rest of my family stay since they were good. But I told my mom and sister they had ignored my warning and I gave them a very clear one. They were shocked. They said my wife never expressed a good reason for not being able to. I stated she doesn't need to answer to either of them. They asked a few times after this when they could visit, and I said, not until they understand 
that they cannot cross that boundary that has been set. They brought me into a group call a few days ago and told me they want to come see us. And I asked if they were going to respect the boundary. They told me they just want to help. I told them the best help they can give is to shut the fuck up and be supportive of what she's doing. I said otherwise their help is not needed and would not be helpful in any way. <laughs> they accused me of being too harsh and disrespectful in the way I was talking to them and they feel like they're being punished for looking out for my wife and my son's best interests. I said they're not doing that. They're doing what they think is best, even after everything I said to them. So they're angry. I told them to shut the fuck up. Am I the idiot? Am I the idiot for telling my sister the reason her daughter always wants to be at my house is because of how dysfunctional her household is? My sister got married 2.5-ish years ago and blended her daughter, 7, and her husband's son, 12, and daughter, 10, together. Or at least they have tried wanted to. But it hasn't worked out that way. My sister's daughter had a pretty awful father, and he died when she was a baby. My sister's defended a lot from him until she'd had enough five months into her pregnancy and left, so she's not known for making the best decisions all the time even with support, and she had a lot of it. Her husband's kids don't know their mom, but she's alive and out there somewhere, but doesn't want to know them. I'm not entirely sure how long my sister and her husband were together before they got married, but around two years would be my guess. Anyway, it was pretty clear, pre-wedding, that her husband's kids were not happy at the idea of blending families. They always seemed so hostile when talking to my sister or any of us, me, parents, other siblings. They would glare at my sister's daughter for no reason other than she was in their line of sight. At the wedding, they kept moving away from everyone and were saying mean things to my sister's daughter when they were asked to sit or stand together. When corrected, they would tell whoever to shut up. They also never want to play with the other kids in our family, even the kids the same age as them. In the time my sister and her husband have been married, my niece has heard that nobody wants her, that the kids would rather die than sit next to her at dinner, that she's not their sibling and they hate her, that her step-siblings would rather be grounded than be in the car at the same time as her, that they'd rather be punished than pass her something, say she wants the salt or whatever. It happens when they're out too. I was with them once and the oldest said he was not sitting next to her. Looked very disgusted at the very idea of it. They also try to say she smells bad. They act like the other is being punished when sitting next to her. They'll even turn their backs to her and shut her out that way. And I started asking my sister if her daughter could come to play with my friends and my wife and I have loved having her. She comes once or twice a week now and she always wants to come more. My sister's starting to get annoyed by it. And she asked me yesterday why her daughter's always so eager to be at my house and why she'd rather be at my house than home. I told her it's because her household is dysfunctional and she has been repeatedly reminded two people don't want her there and actively go out of their way to hurt her feelings. I said, no kid wants that. She asked me how I could judge and then told me it's really none of my business to comment like that. I reminded her that she asked. She shut down and stormed off. Am I the idiot? Am I the idiot for refusing to share my inheritance with my half sibling? I, 20th, recently received an inheritance from my late grandmother. She was very close to me and left me a significant amount of money, which has been life-changing, especially as I'm paying for my own college tuition. My half-sibling, 24F, from my dad's side, found out about it and asked me to share, saying it's only fair since we're family. Here's the thing, she never had a relationship with my grandmother. They met maybe twice, and my grandmother never considered her part of the family, since she came into the picture much later. Now, my half-sibling is telling everyone I'm being selfish, and my dad's family is pressuring me to do the right thing. And I feel torn because it's a lot of money and I can see how it could help her too. But I also feel like this was left to me for a reason. Am I the idiot for wanting to keep my inheritance? Am I the idiot for telling my father that it was his fault he missed my son's first birthday party? My son turned one this past weekend. On Sunday, my husband and I threw a birthday party for him at a local kids venue. We confirmed the date with both the venue and our guests a few months ago. One of those guests was my father. Back when I informed him of the date, he told me he'd come. A few days before the party, he asked if there was any way for me to reschedule it. I said no, as we'd already confirmed everything with the venue. My father then told me he'd be late to the party, because there was an event at his girlfriend's church on the same day, and she wanted him to attend. <laughs> I should say that my immediate family, including my father, is technically Catholic, but none of us practice it. However, my father's girlfriend is very religious. Like Jesus, as her phone wallpaper religious. Since they started dating a little over a year ago, my father has been attending church with her on a semi-regular basis. He has explicitly told me he doesn't like it, but does it to make her happy. I told my father I was fine with him being late, as long as he came to the party at some point. He said he'd show up as soon as the church event was done. A few hours before the party ended, my father texted me the event was still going, and he thought it would be in poor taste for him to leave early, so he probably wouldn't be able to come. I didn't hear from him again that day. On Monday, my father called me to explain that the event went on for longer than he expected. He didn't apologize, but asked if I was angry at him, and I said yes. 
He said he had no way of knowing the event would last as long as it did, but that's not what I'm upset about. I told him he still chose to prioritize an event he didn't even want to attend over his grandson's first birthday party, made several other choices that led him to completely miss the latter, and didn't inform me about any of that until the last minute. All of those decisions were his, so the fact he ultimately didn't come to the party was his fault. My father is still refusing to apologize and insists I have no right to be angry over something he had no control over. I'm starting to feel odd about this. My husband is on my side, but my sister told me I'm being dramatic. Am I the idiot? Am I the idiot for refusing to pay for my niece's wedding after promising to cover it? So, I'm a 35-year-old guy, and I've always been close with my older sister, Emily, 38F, and her daughter, Lily, 22F. Emily had Lily when she was young, 16, and since she was a single mom for most of it, I've always tried to help out where I could. Over the years, I've paid for Lily's summer camps, her college applications, and even her first car. I did this because I love them both and always wanted to support them. A year ago, Lily got engaged to her long-term boyfriend. When they announced the engagement at a family dinner, I said I'd be happy to help with wedding expenses. I never said I'd pay for everything, but apparently my offer was interpreted as me footing the bill for the whole wedding. It became clear when Lily and Emily started planning a big, extravagant affair. Destination wedding, 200 plus guests, you name it. I sat them down and said I'd contribute $15,000, which I thought was a pretty generous amount, but they both seemed really upset. Lily said I promised to pay for the wedding, and Emily backed her up saying I always supported them, and this was the least I could do. Apparently, they were expecting I'd cover a 50,000 pluses wedding. I told them that wasn't happening. $15,000 was all I could give. Now, here's where things get worse. Lily and Emily stopped including me in the wedding planning entirely. I didn't hear much from them for a while, and it turns out they booked everything for the wedding, thinking I'd eventually cave and cover it. Now, they're in over their heads, and the wedding is just three months away. Emily called me, crying, saying they were going to lose deposits and that I ruined the wedding by not coming through. Lily isn't speaking to me. Here's the kicker. Emily and Lily are now saying I'm being manipulative, offering to help, and then taking it away at the last second, making them look bad in front of the groom's family. They claim they never would have planned something so extravagant if I hadn't promised to cover it all. But I never said that. I said I'd help. I feel like I've done more than enough over the years, but now I'm being treated like the villain for not paying for this giant wedding. Am I the idiot?